Yes, indeed. It's Thursday, it's noon, that means it's Let's Talk, our listener call-in program. This is all about you, our listeners calling in and joining a discussion. This week in the studio, Stephen Hurwitz. Hello there. And sitting in for Shelley Rugg, who's on the road somewhere, Sally Phillips. Hello. And I'm Paul Raphael, and uh, we would love you to call in. We're going, uh, let's see, let, uh, d- uh, this phone numbers, I've been away for a while. I'm, it's hard to get back in the swing. 415-663-8492 is the number to call in the studio here to join the discussion today. And uh, we welcome all thoughts and views without judgment. As much as we can, anyway. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'd love for you to join our conversation. When you hear, uh, when you call in, you'll hear a noise as I put you in the system. Just hang on until you hear me say you're on the air. Then give us a first name. Turn your radio down or your whatever you're listening to. Turn it down so we don't get the feedback. And please, most importantly of all, watch your language. No swearing on live radio today. And subject today is border privacy. It's uh, it's um, something, I, as I said, I've been away for a while and uh, been traveling and came back through, went through airports here and in Europe and uh, on the East Coast. Um, it was a breeze, you know, as long as you can afford to... Uh, do the TSA pre thing for five years. Fifty uh, dollars. I don't just think that's run uh, right through eighty five. Oh, is it eighty five? Uh, you know, used to be. You can pay your way through anywhere, and that's that's what we did. So, um, but apparently, as we entered here, indeed, as we left, the uh, customs and border protection agents at the airport or any other port of entry could have asked to look at my smartphone. I didn't have any other electronics with me. I took a little vacation from electronics, really. Uh, But they could have said, I want to look at your phone and give me the password to get in. And I had no idea they could ask that, and I thought that was a ripe discussion topic. What is the reason given for international security or national oh, yeah. security rather national security reasons huh. yes they don't need unlike every other uh, search of private property they do not need a warrant it's called the border exception they can simply ask you to uh, supply your laptop or whatever you're carrying uh, whatever electronic device you're carrying, they want you to give them passwords. And if it's got biometrics, you know, your fingerprint, they want you to do that. Open it up so they can take a look at all the data inside. Apparently, the Customs and Border Protection does not has a policy that doesn't allow them to go into to go as deep as into the cloud. So if you have data like on Apple iPhones that. Most of the stuff ends up in the cloud. They're not supposed to go into the cloud and check your data there without a warrant. Border Patrol has no such guidelines. So, you know, if you're coming across from Mexico or Canada, they can uh, pretty much do whatever they like and access any data they can find. How long is that? How uh, is, is there a time limit on how uh, long they're allowed to keep your devices device or devices and no. and or how long i wonder what a, a the average search take well it depends if they if they're just doing a, a what's called a basic search then it's just whatever's on your phone they just scroll through they hit some some of your uh, apps and check your apps or you know they're looking who knows what they're looking for i guess they're looking for child porn or terrorist things um but uh then they can also without a warrant i believe they can take it in the back somewhere which and you are not allowed to witness it because they don't want people knowing what methods they use but they can hook it up to another computer and use software to get into 
Yeah. Uh, they can take a, wow. they can copy the data off of any device. This is if they remarkable. Feel like it. Where did you, what's so what's your source for this information? Well, my source. Uh it was from uh what alerted me to this as when after I we got back home, uh Credo, my uh phone company, my mobile phone provider. Uh, is an activist organization as well, and they sent this uh, email just with a link to a blog article that they have about it. So if you want to protect your data, it's possible maybe you need two phones. Yeah, well, they say take a burner phone, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's Uh, great. So can you define for people what a burner phone is? Well, it's it's a cheap, you know, flip phone or whatever. Something with with a different SIM card and a different number and Paul, uh, if you have nothing to which hide, which is a pain. Well, there, there it is. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Well, if you yeah, but there's also hide, sort well, of the principle. Yes. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Constitutional principle of uh, illegal search and seizure of yeah. of possible cause, probable cause. Yeah, the founding fathers uh, felt that was necessary. And apparently, uh, courts have not decided uh, really definitively what to do about this. They uh, there have been decisions both ways. There, back a couple of years ago, when it, uh, all this really, I mean, during Obama's time, it was ramped up. They started doing searches. But since, uh, and since I think 2011, it's gone up, like, the the number of searches have gone up to, like, th- I think they did 33,000 searches in 2017. Not a well, great be- number, considering the number of travelers, but... It'd be interesting to see what their criteria are, how they decide well, yeah. who they're uh, going to search. Yeah, well, it, they don't need a cause. I know, but they if do have— If it's random. Yeah, I doubt if it's random, though. Mm. Oh, okay. I don't know. There is an article, but it's uh, from uh, 2000. Well, it's, it's two years old. Yeah, there was a lot of action. The TSA says it does not search travelers' devices for content. So I guess the ACLU of Northern California had filed a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit Mm -hmm. uh, at that time um, seeking government documents from the TSA Mm -hmm. about searches of electronic devices belonging to people traveling on domestic flights. So maybe that's a different well, thing, different agency, actually, of course. Which, Same uh, Homeland Security, right. but uh, different agency, uh, maybe not empowered to do that. But border agents, um, there's, here's an article from, again, two years ago, should border agents scroll through foreigners' Facebook profiles? They, there's a, Again, there's a policy that they're not supposed to go into your, your media, uh, social media uh, profiles. You know, Which though, is ironic, because what is more public than your social media profile? Anyway. Yeah, that's so funny. Um, I'm just thinking about how you have all these, uh, unfortunately and rather disastrously, all these um, mass shootings. Mm. And they just always... Just had one a day or two ago. Really? Mm. And another... Yeah, there, there's um, so many, they don't even... Uh, it's it's like register hardly anymore. noteworthy anymore. Mm. That's so despicable. Uh, but what happens is they usually end up going back through the person's devices and finding posts or the person had mm-hmm. been posting a manifesto or whatever. And so maybe this is well, what they're sort of preemptively doing so they don't have a terrorist or that is psycho person who's a murderer. Part of the justification for it, of course, yeah. Uh, the, and the big question is how much of how much searching are we prepared to put up with? I mean, mm. we're all taking our shoes off, except those of us who have TSA pre. <laughs> yes, if you have TSA pre check, you don't have to take your shoes off. It's, it's, it's worth a good the investment, price of admission. I'd say. Yes. I wonder has anybody listening had some experience with this that they want mm. to share? Four one five six six three eight four nine two is the number to call in, or eight three one seven is another number you could call in. Give us a call. Tell us your thoughts about um, what you think about this this whole thing. I didn't even realize it was going on because you know 
I don't keep up with everything. Um, But we do have a high surf advisory warning. From noon Thursday to 9 p.m. Friday, a large northwest swell will arrive at the Sonoma coast this afternoon and spread southward to Monterey County during the day. Seas 8 to 12 feet during the day on Thursday, today, building to 10 to 13 feet into Friday. Breaking waves of 15 to 20 feet possible in the surf zone. The largest waves expected Thursday night through late Friday morning. Beach visitors, surfers, fishermen, and others visiting the beaches should be prepared for building seas with dangerous crashing waves in the surf zone. Expect an increased risk of rip currents and sneaker waves that can pull swimmers and surfers out to sea. Waves will run up beaches faster than usual. Sea surface temperatures in the mid to upper 50s will cause hypothermia in a short amount of time. Never turn your back on the ocean. Yes, good advice. When at the beach, keep an eye on the ocean. Look out to sea and see what's coming in because, you know... Uh, it's a it's a dangerous place. You know, the subject of border security, yep. it's just an example, I think, of all the different ways that the, the government is, excuse me. Eroding our rights. Eroding, uh-huh. yes, our, our privacy. Yeah. And inserting mm. themselves yeah, more and more into our private lives, for sure. Facial recognition. Oh, uh, chips in passports. Uh, very right? handy. I don't have it helps. Those. You don't? I do. Do I have a chip in my passport? Oh, yeah. Unless you haven't renewed it for 10, 15 years. No, I have. <laughs> I didn't know that. I knew I had a stripe. No, but, you got uh, a chip in there. Oh, and okay. uh, what's, what that does, of course, is it alerts the – it helps the uh, customs agents and immigration to see you coming. There's a detector on the way in, so by the time you arrive at the desk, your stuff is all on screen. Very well worth the time saved, but also kind of an invasion, isn't it? Uh, Sort of. I don't think you can travel these days without numerous uh, invasions in terms of Mm -hmm. people uh, being identified over and over Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. I was, let's see... Which airport was it? I was searched. My bag. Uh, uh, on the way out of uh, Barcelona. I think. On the way out of Barcelona Airport. Mm. Yeah. Uh, they ran. First of all, they randomly, as we were going to get on the plane, mm-hmm. they randomly took me aside mm. to look at my passport just one more time. And there was a man behind me. They did it to. And he was apoplectic about it. He was really fussing because he was so invested in getting to board earlier than uh, a lot of the people the proletariat. Uh, on the plane. <laughs> I, I've never quite seen such early, this sort of pre-board anxiety. Mm. Uh, and and um, he was so upset. And he kvetched all the way down the jetway <laughs> to a person like an air plain work or whatever you call them, Mm -hmm. uh, who walked him down the jetway after checking his pat. Like, it it took like 10 seconds. They searched your bag. Then they took me aside and searched my bag just as I was saying, that guy's going to get in so much trouble. They're probably going to search his bag because he's making (laughs) such a kerfuffle. And of course, the irony is they pulled me over and checked my bag. They did not find my Marcona almonds. (laughs) Almonds. <laughs> Not then, that I wasn't allowed to take them, by the way. But then you were searched where? In Newark as well, I think. Weren't you? Didn't you have your bag? Uh, up? I was searched. My bag was searched in Newark because there was a can in the bag mm. that looked kind of janky and suspicious coming through the machine. And it was actually, um, full disclosure, a canister of of salt, salt flakes, salt flakes from Spain, and uh, and that and would actually be su- suspicious. I hmm. was so suspicious because it's like, yeah, she swabbed it. I know. I said this is salt, and she was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, but right. then she was really nice, and <laughs> they, everybody was actually terribly nice. There was no like weird I, officious hostility at I all. I have to say, it was the easiest uh, dealings with uh, airport and. 
customs did you find that it, I've ever had. Was it know. different uh, coming through within the European common market versus coming um, into the United States? I don't know. They were really nice, everybody in Spain. Yeah. In terms of the all the, all the Border Patrol people were really quite nice in Spain. Spain sure. and and even in Paris when we flew into Paris mm. even even that went really quickly and smoothly and they were quite they weren't as pleasant as the people in Spain well, <laughs> that just know. be pushing it four one five six six three eight four nine two if you'd like to call and tell us about your experiences because I know a lot of us have been traveling it's been a nice beautiful long summer. And uh, fall, and people are traveling, and let's hear about if you had hear any about your searches and seizures, skirmishes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it uh, coming off off the plane though. Uh, my experience is they just rush you right through. It's just mm. there's somebody. It's well, they have all this. Sure you I mean, they've rapidly. they've really made homecoming easy. They've got all these automated customs things. You don't even need to fill out a form. You just touch. You know, touch screen. Did did that? Do you have anything? Nope. 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 Thank you. And uh, it's it's all. I have to say, it was very easy. But nobody asked me to look at my phone, which is. I don't know what I would have done. I guess I would have just said, "Sure, okay," because you know, of course, I have nothing to hide. But now i've been researching this if i were to take my laptop through and there was all these articles on on my laptop about government procedures at airports and border patrol and all that sort of stuff would that you know or if i'd been researching an article for uh geez, you know child porn <laughs> if i had if i had articles relating to Illegal activities would that make a difference? Would they? They'd be have detained? to find those. It, it takes time to find what's here, what's in there. I think it has to do with your country of origin. Well, if you're so coming in from Jordan, part of the reason that uh, 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 there was so much activity against it, or so many questions asked about the procedure uh, two years ago, there was uh, there were a couple of cases. Um, Sid. Bikanavar sounds like an East uh, Asian, South Asian person, a U.S. born NASA engineer who was detained at Houston after a two week vacation in Chile. He was pressured into turning over the passcode to the smartphone he was carrying, which was owned by his employer, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And uh, wow. that caused a bit of a stir because, you know, a border agent. Checking, getting the password to a jet propulsion lab. <laughs> really, might be phone. some very uh, tricky uh, stuff. Yeah. And then there was Haisam El Sharkawi again, an American citizen, but uh, you know, obviously, perhaps of duskier skin tone than they might like, who was stopped at L.A. airport before getting on a plane to Saudi Arabia. He was handcuffed, questioned, and pressed into giving up his smartphone's passcode. After a 15-minute search, he was released, but uh, apparently not very happy about it, of course. And uh, when the Muslim travel ban went into effect, then they started ramping it up even more. So it's uh, – and uh, there's an article in The Atlantic that I found uh, where uh, – this was written in 2017, and the – person writing it who is uh, a legal scholar i guess um he says the passwords are not covered uh by the fourth amendment or the fifth amendment uh but he says i've written before how the fifth amendment prevents law enforcement from demanding that someone give up a password and how it may not apply to devices that are unlocked via fingerprint iris scans or speech patterns so biometric uh, identification may not be subject to uh, the I same th regulations. I think so. they're just a hassle factor. Yeah. If you you know it's w when it's de de uh, defending your rights versus two hours at the airport to and do it. Yeah, and risking being denied entry if you're not a citizen. If you're just traveling to the states, it's better just to comply. I think you just 
either don't bring your devices or uh, or you unload everything. You t- you put everything up somewhere else in the cloud and you shut off the access to the cloud. I wonder or if whatever. they can uh, make you uh, open a hard drive. I mean, a little, uh, you know, put it all on one of your little, whatchamacallits. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, probably. If they find, I, it seems like if they were, if it were a thumb drive or something, that would be a little different. That would be like search and seizure, wouldn't it? Hmm. I don't know. It's not a communication device, you know. I don't know. Well, uh, there's also cybersecurity risks for people who travel for business. I mean, there's that side. There's that end where hmm. you're traveling and you could have your security breached. Yeah. And so that's a whole other kind of the example angle. given in other articles about doctors who are traveling with patients' records on their laptops. I mean, should they be doing that, first of all? I, I don't know. Do they do that? I would say if it's not digitized today mm. in terms of... But uh, on the, they actually travel with a laptop with that data in there, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and so they, so border agents would have access to those... Well, how irate files. are you about this? I'm not irate. I just didn't know about it. I, I see. And I was what I... Sort of asking myself what I would do if I if what I would have done if I'd been asked to unlock my phone. I'd, well, what would you do if you're stopped by a police officer and he asks you uh, permission to search your car? Do you say yes? Do you uh, to search my car? Yeah. Probably not. You say no. You can't. I'd say I'd I'd like to think I would say. <laughs> it's all about the moment, isn't it? I mean, if you're really. Scared or are nervous, they allowed to search your car without no. a no? I don't know, they need a, or... they need a warrant mm. uh, unless you give them permission unless or unless uh, They're like vampires unless they have a uh, <laughs> reasonable cause to believe a crime has been committed. Say like uh, smelling marijuana right odor, then they can say oh. or you're driving extremely erratically, perhaps or something, and they pull you over. Well, can, that, is that a reason? That's a reason to maybe give you a. Uh, breathalyzer breathalyzer or whatever yeah and you can refuse to do that and then they'll just take you in Uh, you can actually refuse I'm not sure if it's in every state but you can refuse to give them ID if you if you don't like it but uh, it's not advisable I'd say I've I've seen on the internet people posting refusing to lower their window right (laughs) Yeah. And, um, yeah, well, they can shoot right through the window. That's been proven. <laughs> yes, very recently. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, give us a call, won't you? 415-663-8492. We're well, talking mostly about uh, privacy at the border because... I think uh, just as tricky, though, is just the whole invasion of privacy. Invasion that of we privacy. live in an era where we just aren't private citizens anymore. Hmm. Uh, I find that troubling. But that's with our own complicity, though. I mean, we know that company. We obviously know by now that companies like Facebook are using everything about our profile and data to uh, make money off us. Yeah, but that's a little different than actually. Um, not that I'm supporting that, but it's mm. different than actually identifying us as a specific person mm. and then uh, analyzing our cookies and our. Uh, uh, what sites we link ourselves to mm. and mm. what we click on and all that. That tells an lo- awful lot about ourselves. Yeah, what are, I have articles from the ACLU now, and I could be a member of the ACLU. Would that make a difference in a... In a uh, that's a real snoozer. A right-wing government. That's, that's a real a snoozer. snoozer. <laughs> <laughs> I and, love uh, it. How about Obama? Is it is it worse? Uh, I mean, we're discovering that uh, all these things we think Trumpians have have brought about, but it turns out they are just enforcing a lot of rules that actually came about just under Obama. Magnifying everything that happened under Obama. Yeah, Do any research was, on that at the border? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was starting to get troublesome. People were starting to look at it in around 2011. So you know, halfway through. 
Obama's uh, presidency. Uh, since 2016, it's you know there have been various threats. Like uh, remember one of the Homeland Security guys. <laughs> there have been so many head of the Homeland Security since uh, 2016. Uh, John Kelly, he's, he suggested that visitors should be required to turn over passwords to their social media accounts or risk being denied entry. Uh, which was uh, which was you know privacy advocates like uh, Electronic is, Frontier is that Foundation. For everyone entering the country, or Visitors, is it yeah. just people that they feel like they'd like to target because of the way the country they're coming from, or the way they may look? Or well, there's all that. Oh, at the airport, there was someone at the airport. I forget which airport that said that his business partner from many years ago got searched every single time he got pulled out and searched every single time and it was mm. many many years ago mm. i remember this man that i was buying a bottle of water and he was next to me and for some reason he was very chatty and um suspiciously so uh but he he was saying that and that the, and and uh, the the indication Without him really spelling it out, was that his his colleague uh, was looked a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, but Whatever this is a was. long time ago, so it may have been that he just had long hair and a beard. Like I used to, and I used to get regularly. I think more serious over. erosion is the is ice, and uh, I don't think they're getting warrants when they go into these houses and bust down a door and grab no. somebody. No, uh, a warrantless yeah. search is. Illegal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know much about that. I just keep hearing that it's happening in, in um, these sweeps, and it's terribly alarming, and it seems completely unjust. And back to your question about Barack Obama and his administration, did ICE do that to the degree? Was there that kind of action to that degree Well, during his tenure? There I, were... I can't remember. There was a huge ramp up in deportations during Obama's time. Yeah, but were they uh, were they isolating families, uh, uh, walking in the door and grabbing the the breadwinner and leaving yeah. leaving well, children yeah, there sure. unaccompanied? Sure, I'm sure that was happening. Maybe not as much as uh, you know once it became a policy. But yeah, of course they they take away the one that they're there to pick up or the one who doesn't have documentation. And uh I think we were lulled uh by Obama's uh sociability it was just he was a he's a nice guy, rolls around on the floor with babies. Uh you know I just don't think they public Trump is so out there in terms of all of this that he drew mm. attention to everything, mm -hmm. whereas Obama, it was just, uh, you know, he was drawing attention to uh, lots of different things. He spoke so intelligently at all. He still does. About is, the threat. It is uh, amazing when you listen to the two, uh, the contrast between the two people. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency has no limitation on what content, for example, they can... Uh, they can read. Um, Corman. Oh yeah, there was a there was a uh, there was a a. Oh yes, this is KWMR ninety point five in Point Race Station, eighty nine point nine FM in Bolinas, ninety two point three in San Geronimo Valley, and streaming live all day, all night, everywhere in the world at kwmr.org. And also on the KWMR app on your phone. Uh, try that sometime. Check that out. Download it from the App Store. And KWMR is supported by Gallery Route 1, proud to nurture and promote emerging and established artists and to support KWMR. Artist-run Gallery Route 1 believes that art serves the cultural, political, and environmental concerns of the community, open every day except Tuesday. Information at 415-663-1347 and online at galleryroute1.org. And we're also underwritten by Tamales Bay Foods, home of the Cowgirl Creamery and Cantina. 
Providing fresh organic cheeses, picnic items, and takeaway meals. Located at 80 4th Street in the Tomales Bay Foods Barn in Point Reyes Station. Tomales Bay Foods is open Wednesday through Sunday. And local programming is also provided by Point Reyes Farmstead Cheese Company, offering handcrafted artisan cheese, including fresh mozzarella, bay blue, toma, and Point Reyes original blue. The farm's culinary and educational center, The Fork, offers farm-to-table culinary experiences and is available for events. More information at 1-800-591-6878 or online at pointraisecheese.com. Hey, since you uh, mentioned Gallery at One, can I just put a plug in there? Oh. I have a show there at the moment. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, we close on Sunday, so if anybody wants to go and see what I was up to for the last six months... There it is. Excellent. Stephen Hewitt's at Gallery Route 1. And Carla, you're on the air. Stop chopping your food. And <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, what's your name? And uh, Tapping away is what he was doing. Tapping away. Uh, I didn't tapping. realize you could hear me. This is David. <laughs> Hi, and, David. Uh, let's see. I may get interrupted here. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to say that one of the things that I see happening um, – with all this is that there is uh, each each of us because of our computational power and internet and mm. th- that each one of us has so much more power than we used to. Um, you know, it used to be we yeah. just walk through life and gosh, you know, at some point you could call somebody on the telephone. You know, you could tell the operator what number you wanted and she would both beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and um and now you talk to anybody in the world and you can say whatever you want you can exchange huge amounts of data on how to build all sorts of nefarious things um yeah and uh so there is a war going i mean this is it is a war in a sense and uh Gosh, you know, I can understand from a governmental point of view you want to get a handle on this because, Mm. as I see it, you know, those certain aspects of life are exploding. And anybody who wants to can go out and buy an AR-15 and go up and Mm -hmm. go and blow up the Calgary Creamery, which is at a 4B Street or whatever you announce it as. Um, It's we we all have so much more power than we used to. Mm. You can so recruit ISIS members. We can recruit ISIS members through our telephones. All that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. And, you know, how how much are you willing to put up with? How much surveillance are we re- willing to put up with to protect against that? And is it re- are they really protecting us against it, or is it just making a show in some cases? Well, uh, I'm sure some of it's making a show because putting on a show is going to intimidate some people or drive them a little deeper and make it uh, make them, you know, bury their information on their phones deeper and deeper. Yeah. More encryption, et cetera. True. That's that's the war, the escalating war aspect. Mm. That's well, very good. Yeah. Um, Wasn't there a a kind of a question and um, a conflict over whether or not like the, the the 3D the plans for the gun that the, a gun you could actually print on a 3D printer mm-hmm. and that was going to be put on the internet for people to access? I mm-hmm. don't know whether or not that came through or if it was blocked. I think it was blocked. I but think, but uh, if, some, if some somebody in some country where there aren't a whole lot of laws decides to finds those instructions and puts them mm-hmm. up or forwards them, I mean, it's pretty hard to contain information anymore. Yeah, if it was ever on the web, then it's in the Wayback Machine or somewhere. It's yeah, on, it's in archive somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayback yeah. Machine. Hey, that's what it's called. Well, carry on. I do have to go. Thank you, David. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's was a, a remnant call. from Rocky and Bowling call, I think, the Wayback Machine. Wayback Machine? Is it yeah. really? 
Yes. Yeah. Well, it's Ashley's an actual, Peabody, Mr. It is Peabody. An, and an actual thing. What was the other character? Oh, oh anyway, friend, yeah. we digress. This is, no, this, this is, is important. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Paul. Do the. Give us a call, won't you? 415-663-8492. Let us know about your uh, opinions and experiences about uh, search and seizure abilities by border agents especially, but uh, maybe in general. Driving a car, how safe do you feel when somebody stops you? Mm. What are your uh, What are your options if you're stopped? I and feel. Do you want to enforce your uh, your constitutional rights, or will you just go along with whatever happens because you're late for your appointment? I anyway? think it's very mixed. On a uh, holiday night, if they're stopping people to to uh, identify drunk drivers, etc. Mm. I mean, I feel better knowing there might be a roadblock where I know I ran into one. Mm. That people were coming through, and they were just checking everyone that came through yeah. for drunks. Uh, I felt better. Mm. Yeah, good. Okay, we're being protected. I have always had a bit of a panic attack whenever I get pulled over. Oh yeah, yeah. I get. I I'm fairly terrified yeah, uh, of too. what I don't know. It's just that I was raised. I was weaned on guilt, so I just feel like <laughs> I did something wrong. <laughs> And I'm going to go to jail and, um, you know, the, all kinds of yeah. things. Even though I actually haven't ever even so much as, you know, had a drink in mm. uh, in the car or something no. like that. I don't, I'm not sure of it. I, maybe I've been stopped once back in England. Hello, listener. You're on the air. What's your name, please? Hello, this is Athena. Athena. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I just had a, a little to contribute um, from watching some Never Get Busted videos um, mm. that were produced by, like, a, a fellow who was a Texas uh, narcotics officer who then kind of turned into a pot grower. Um, mm. So he had all these inside tips, and I just wanted to share them. Yeah. Uh, that is, if you're in a car, the best thing to do... Um, is if you have anything that you don't want the police to see, just stash it really well. If they ask to search you, say yes, no problem. It's the sort of reverse psychology. And then they'll just, you know, they'll do a little circle around the car. Maybe they'll shine their light in, and they'll send you on your way. If you say no, I'm invoking my right to, you know, mm. uh, to not have not be searched for unreasonable, you know, for no reason, then what they do is they get on their radio and they let all the, the you know, CHP or whoever know within a radius and everyone shows up yeah. and looks around and, try, you know, starts asking you questions and looks for any excuse. I mean, they can use anything as probable cause, really. Mm -hmm. And then they will do a full search and they'll make sure they get in there. Mm. So you're very vulnerable in your car, unfortunately, because you're on their turf, essentially. So um, that was the hot tip. And then it, it's different if you're in your home. If you're in your home, this fellow, uh, this former officer, recommended not even opening your door and just talking through your door or window and, and give them your lawyer's phone number because if they're just knocking on your home door, mm. um, you have a lot of lot more rights there and they are not allowed to come in unless they have a search warrant. Mm. Um, and if they are just knocking and asking questions, it's because they're fishing for something and, you know, maybe they want to get your friend in trouble or whoever, you know, however they found your address, but mm. don't have to answer questions or or talk to them at all, and you definitely shouldn't open your door or let them in in any way, because, you know, once they're in, they start looking around, and who knows, like, what they might find. So, that's all. I've yeah. always found it interesting, Athena, I just want to hear you, um, when somebody says, call my lawyer, as if we've all got this lawyer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that, that's a good point. Uh, I thought you were my lawyer, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> call my lawyer. Yeah, yeah Athena, you know. do you have a lawyer, um, I don't anymore. There was a time when I was doing a lot of protests and stuff, and I did have a lawyer's phone number, like, memorized for that mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also say, you know, you can, you'll need to speak to my lawyer. I'll have to get back to you with their phone number kind of thing. <laughs> you know, you, you don't have to tell them yeah. um, right then. I actually do have one for them to call, but... Yeah, it is handy. I mean, even to memorize any random lawyer's phone number is helpful because you can always change the lawyers later. Right, he's a contract um, attorney, right? Call my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, yeah, that's all I have to offer. Thank you well, so thank much. You. Yeah, so uh, what do you do when you're stopped? Are you going to let them, do you say yes? You know, luckily I've never been in that situation. Um, 
I'm all about prevention. I mean, if I had to, I would probably say yes. But if I'm all about, um, you know, just making sure my registration's up to date, I have no taillights out, like no reason to pull me over. I'm I'm a very cautious driver because yeah. I don't really, you know, I just don't enjoy those interactions. I think they're uncomfortable in general. But, um, yeah, you know, I think uh, I think if I had to, I would just use these strategies. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Good advice. Sure. Good luck to everyone. Thanks, <laughs> Athena. Bye. Bye-bye. There you are. A little advice from people in the know is always a good thing. Um, 415-663-8492 is the number to call here. We have about, I don't know, another 15 minutes or so. And uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts about... Being pulled over would be Being good. pulled over, yeah. uh, search and seizure, being asked to... Yeah, haven't we all been, except for, luckily, for Athena, we've all been pulled over, right? I... No. I'm thinking about it. No, I, I, I might I have been pulled over back when I was a teenager in for, the UK. Are but. you ready for this? I was wearing my seatbelt, but I wasn't wearing it properly, according uh. to the police officer, and he pulled me over in Berkeley. I, I had... A shoulder harness type, you know, Mm -hmm. like a seatbelt. But my shoulder had been really, I don't know, bothering me. Mm. So I had the seatbelt under Under my arm. arm. Mm. He ticketed me for that. And when he left, or when he was leaving, he'd written the ticket. So I thought, okay, all bets are off here. I said, why don't you now go do something of actual import? Ooh. Naughty, naughty. Oh, he, he He's walked He's just away. trying to... Uh, oh, come on. Safeguard you. No, he wasn't. A, he was just accident. fulfilling a quota. He was a, it's ridiculous. You could have been hurt in an accident if you had a little head on. You might no, have. I had the I had it on. And, you know, I, women's bodies are different than men's bodies. Mm. and um, I've noticed that. So the... Yes, the strap shoulder harness actually does kind of fit a little differently, mm-hmm. and I felt quite secure as as it was on the way it was, and it mm. was of course he couldn't know this, but it was a sort of temporary thing, and I just but I did think it was just um, a, a staggering, uh, staggeringly gratuitous act. Well, so he probably couldn't see the strap. They do look for the diagonal strap as they're driving along and if they don't see it then they figure you're not wearing it at all so that's did why he call he for backup over. when you when he stopped oh. that would have been just <laughs> i've noticed when i'm no. driving on 101 that when someone stopped there's always backup there mm. Mm. yeah and i can understand why i think that's probably one of the most dangerous situations mm. for a highway patrolman mm-hmm. just don't know who's in that car you have to you have to have some sympathy for uh, law enforcement of all kinds including border agents and uh, TSA and all those people uh, they are sending us their worst people <laughs> <laughs> They're sending us their worst people, murderers and rapists from everywhere. Got a call. And uh, oh, we have a call. But first, I hang on, caller. I'll be with you in just a moment. Uh, we have a surf advisory announcement. A large northwest swell will arrive at the Sonoma Coast this afternoon and spread southward to Monterey County during the day. Seas 8 to 12 feet during the day Thursday, building to 10 to 13 feet into Friday. Breaking waves 15 to 20 feet possible in the surf zone. Largest waves expected Thursday night through late Friday morning. Beach visitors, surfers, fishermen, and others visiting the beaches should be prepared for building seas with dangerous Dangerous crashing waves in the surf zone. Expect an increased risk of rip currents and sneaker waves that can pull swimmers and surfers out to sea. Waves will run up beaches faster than usual. Sea surface temperatures in the mid to upper 50s can cause hypothermia in a short amount of time. Never turn your back to the ocean. Never turn your back to the ocean. Hi, caller, you are on the air. What's your name, please? Hello, Paul. Hello there. Sam K, how are you? Hey, I'm Kay. I'm well, good to hear Hi, you. Hi, people. I saw you yesterday, and she said she, I never up, so I'm calling up. <laughs> I'm at the I'm at the airport. Oh. I put, I put my feet in the ocean yesterday. It was very cold. You're right about the hypothermia. Mm. Um, I, I just got checked at the airport, and they didn't strip me or anything, so that was cool. But what are you talking about today, anyway? Uh, uh, well, yeah, we're talking about 
it's it's veering all over the place now, but it was about uh, it started with the border agents being able to look at your electronic devices and search your laptops and phones for anything they want to search for. Huh. Yeah, there's a border you, exception. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. And we just got back from a trip, and uh, I was wondering what I might have done and what other people have done or would do. Oh, yeah, interesting. I haven't been out of the country for a while, but hmm. um, anyway, I just wanted to say hey to everybody, and I'm <clears throat> sorry. I... It's very timely if you're at the airport. We've, that's what we're yeah. How was well, your yeah. uh, trip through the security? Flawless? Flawless. <laughs> they make me go. I have a titanium knee, so they make me go through the stand on the yellow footprints and put your arms up in the air like you're oh, yeah. getting, getting stuck up. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, they didn't make me take my shoes off because I'm old. <laughs> Just good. It's, well, there are some. There are some good things. Some of the perks. Some of the perks. <laughs> yeah. Well, no safe way. journey to you. Yeah. Thank you. We, well done. Yeah, we went to went to Crater Lake and went to the Redwoods and saw some old friends. And so yeah, it was a good trip. Good. But those Ike staffs had to go to the airport really early this morning because um, they're going to Boston and their plane already left. So we're we're here until four o'clock. Oh no. Twiddling oh, our thumbs and twiddling our other parts. Uh, is oh, SFO a good has good food, depending on uh, what... T- yeah, they do. They do. You're right. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't mind airports. It's just, you know, it's one way to spend a day, I guess. I like airports. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I well, peruse magazines. I peruse yeah, the magazines. I'm going to do that. I might get a glass of wine. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, safe journeys, MK. Thank you, sweetie. It's good to, well, good to see you. Ditto. Take care. Bye. Have a good trip. Bye. And we have another caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. Hello. This is Colleen. Colleen. Hey. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. We missed you. Oh. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to have two, two funny little things to talk about, you know, because we also just came back from a trip and, and going in and out of Denmark, it's like, you know, you just, if you have nothing to declare, you just go on the green line. And if you have something to declare, you go on the red line, you just kind of go in. Mm. You know, there's no, it's no big deal in, yeah. in, in departing. So it's amazing the difference. But another thing, of course, uh, if you're over a certain age, you don't have to take off your shoes. Yes. Yeah. And I often think about that in a way of if you really want to do something bad, just just get an old person. But those shoe bombs. <laughs> I, you know, it's like it's kind of crazy just because you're so mates and you can you know just take off your shoes and it's kind of weird. Well, and there's the other thing. We we arranged to have TSA pre before we left on this trip. Uh, Absolutely. You know, you pay 85 bucks and you're not a threat? Yeah. Really? The only way to go. <laughs> well, they do uh, a background check. That's They do a background check. Oh, right? oh yeah, of course. <laughs> you could... You can be bad afterwards, right? When you've already had the pack of check, now you can be bad until they check it again, right? <laughs> yes, I think I so. I mean, what? I don't know. What are we doing that's so terrible? We're just getting on a plane and sitting there and sort of suffering through the ride till we get to our destination. And that's what, you know, 99.999% of the people are doing. Uh, all right. So I have a funny story. So when I left Copenhagen, I celebrated my birthday over there with my family. So my sister had given me this little cylinder that I assume had Danish flags inside and I guess if you pull the string it would go poof. Oh no. Yeah. So <laughs> but I, I chose not to, to do it. I thought it'd be fun to bring it home to my uh, celebration. So so I had wrote, I had put it inside a, a poster that my sister also gave me so it's inside. So of course in Copenhagen they pulled it out and what do you have there? And I pulled I said I have this poster that you know that got hmm. blah 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 and I said, well, what is this? What thing? I said, it was my birthday. I said, this is with the flags inside, you know. And he said, sorry, we can't take it. It has, you know, it has a, a, probably a little bit of um, uh, match stuff, whatever makes them uh, go off, you know. Yeah. And I said, I said, this is my birthday. This is just flags. I said, can I pull it here at the airport? We can have flags. Or can you give it to somebody that has, that has flags? I said, this is not going to go to waste. This is a fun gift. Yeah. I said, so I can't do it. It has to go into the track. Yeah, so, I've had that experience. I was kind of like, my bags, I didn't get my bags. <laughs> yeah, they can't take it as a gift. You try to give it to them as a gift. I, no. And they, 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 they are bound to not accept it. Sure. I know, I know. But I was kind of, I said, can I, can I just do it here at the airport? You know, 
<laughs> can I leave it at the airport? Yeah. Can yeah, I? right. <laughs> Just leave it on the counter. <laughs> yeah. This thing with a minute explosive I in mean, it. It's, yes. it's probably less than a match to have, you know, less than what's yeah, yeah. on a match. You know, whatever it is that they uh, well. make it go poof, you know. Mm. <laughs> oh, I remember, Karine, what they took from me was some jam, a little jar of jam. Mm. Uh, that my friend had made. Or because I got, it was too big, because there's more. No, whatever. it was under. It was the right size, oh, but it really? was jam, and they and that was sort of a gel-like substance. And uh-huh. and well, I said, to, like I it. said to the guy, listen, my friend made this uh-huh. from her own trees. So could you take it home to your family? And he said, I can't. I said, yeah. are you seriously throwing out good, like, handmade, good beautiful food? <laughs> he said, I have to. And I yeah. said, just, I'll look away. <laughs> just, I want you to have it. <laughs> well, you know, I had an incident like that. With my, I was down in San Diego a couple of years ago, and my sister had made these homemade pickled green beans that was like to, to die for me. They were so good. I, she had given me a small jar and they took it from me in the same thing. I said, I said, my sister got this. This is like, you know, and she picked me. She did this all, you know, this is all handmade. And I said, hmm. no. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too bad. It's understandable. Though. They're, they're anyway, just it's protecting us. to have you guys home, but uh, as far as the security and stuff, you know, travel in and out of Copenhagen because it's a breeze. <laughs> I'm there. So what about when you came into the U.S.? Was there any? Uh, it was well. No, it was okay. They kind of what was it? They looked at. They were, they, they did open up my bag to look for something, and I forget what it was that they thought it was. But hmm. you know, I was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but um, but it's um, and by the way, Copenhagen has the best restaurants in the in the airport. Uh. It's unbelievable what you can get. Okay. I'm there. And what you can buy. <laughs> Unbelievable. We'll fly Danish Airlines from here on out. <laughs> Thank you, Corinne. Okay, take Good care. to hear your voice. Back. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we have a couple of minutes. Give us a call if you have another opinion about uh, searching and seizing of your property, uh, especially at airports and ports of entry, but anywhere, really. I want my jam back (laughs) now that I've remembered that. You know, maybe that they're so successful, though, in terms of uh, thwarting that uh, even the threat that we take it for granted doesn't make the news, but uh, who knows what they're intercepting? Yeah, who knows? It no, could seriously. be. I, uh, that's a good question. And I did not look into that, uh, which was. Gail's uh, always said if you really want to do some damage, you don't have to go through security. Just go one of those really busy days when there's like 100 people trying to get through. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go through security. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Where was that? Ooh. That's well, not true. Lines. You have to go through security. No, no if you be want for to, security. If you want to do something nasty. Oh, dear. This is an insidious show. Uh, It is an insidious show, and we'll probably, next time we travel, you and I will (laughs) probably be pulled over. (laughs) Thrown in Um, the air We heard that show. Yes, we heard that show. Uh, uh, Just one, uh, there was a, there has been a Supreme Court decision which sort of allowed this to carry on, that uh, customs don't have to have warrants. Uh, There was a... Um, uh, Pascal Abidor, a U.S.-French dual citizen and doctoral student at McGill University in Montreal. Abidor was returning to the U.S. from Canada when a customs agent inspected his laptop and found images of rallies by the Islamic groups Hamas and Hezbollah. The laptop was returned to Abidor 11 days after v- agents viewed several files, including, he says, the transcript of a chat with his girlfriend. Uh, and that actually went as far as the Supreme... No, it went to a, a court uh, in New York, uh, Ninth Circuit. And they, sa- they said, no, yeah, that's okay. So that kind of... The border exception is starting to become legally defined. I guess they have to do a lot more... Uh, they have to have a lot more language around it to define everything that's going on. We need an airport t-shirt that says, call my lawyer. <laughs> yes, that'll... That's going to go well. That'll, yeah. that'll go down that's, really that's well. That's not going to antagonize uh, border agents. No, no. Yeah, and... Um, 
you know, it's always interesting. People who look nervous, as they said, oh, yeah, we pulled him over because he looked nervous. Well, who isn't at an airport? And, and well, ner- I mean, agitated and, oh, are we going to miss my flight? Oh, blah, blah. You know, all that stuff. Many that's people why. are blasé. Many people are blasé. I think that's probably true. And, I like and, airports. They're, yeah, you like you know, well, you like flying? I don't have a problem with flying in air. I like the architecture. Airports are very architectural and great people watching. Yeah. Well, that's true. There is that. If you arrive early enough that you're not uh, not worried about getting to your flight or being stopped by the TSA or by customs or whoever. Yeah. Well, well it's, I, I it think was, I think we're reason. resigned to it. I really do. Hmm. You just got to get there really early and you slog through. And yeah. that's my uh, And then once you're on the attitude. flight, everything's fine. You're in the lap of luxury with, if you can afford to pay for it. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for calling. Thank you to all our listeners. And I'd just like to point out that KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. We'll be back next week with another show. Thank you, everybody.